uh, it's about infusions. Infusions are difficult on the best days, but once you get it, it kind of makes sense, and it's very repetitive. It's not like it's a whole lot of codes that you have to use for infusions, but the verbiage and the terminology kind of, you stumble over it, but if you deal with, you know, ERs, uh, or they call them EDs, I'm still old, where they, you know, ERs, uh, or uh, clinics that are doing things like chemo, then again, in, in infusions are going to be a part of your life and this won't bother you. Uh, so the first question that came in had said uh, 96368 can be uh, only allowed once per encounter, which is correct. However, if there are start and stop times at and the last three hours are uh, you allowed to charge the 96366 times two along with the 96368? And um, the 66 is actually an animal code. So that's the first question that we're going to answer. Then the second question that uh, uh, was appended to that it says when you have someone that comes into the ER and they do an IV infusion which is 96360 and they do a start and stop time and then they transfer them to observation which is not inpatient it's just observation and on the second day is given an infusion with a med 96365 with a start and stop time then they're wanting to know you know how do we code that so we're going to look at that real quick <music> So the first thing you have to know, and I've got um, website addresses. If you're in the CCO club, you get these trans, you get these answer sheets. That's another perk. So you can go back and check those links. Uh, what is concurrent infusions? Because that's kind of what we're dealing with. But uh, whenever you have two drugs are given at the same time, or multiple infusions are provided through the same intravenous line, okay? So concurrent is the key word that we want to pay attention to because that's going to help you with the stop and start. Now, when you look in your CPT manuals, this is the area that you're going to. So this is the headings that you actually see in the manual. It's under the medicine section, and I was able to pull this from find code. I love the way their encoder is set up. It is very conducive to education. But note, it's therapeutic, prophylactic, and diagnostic injections and infusion. But these codes that this person asked about excludes chemotherapy or high complex drugs. All right. So there's another set of codes for those. So mainly what we're dealing with is uh, hydration and there's codes for hydration uh, that aren't these, uh, but we are um, giving them an IV, hooking them up to fluid for a specific reason other than just hydrating them. And then sometimes they'll they'll put a piggyback or, or attach another bag uh, with medication. Now, if it's something that they do less than 15 minutes, that's considered a push, and that's a different code. So uh, with this intravenous uh, infusion, and it can be for any of these reasons, uh, the, the primary code that you're going to use is the 96365. It's up to one hour. And then you notice here, these are all add-on codes. So an additional hour, you know, uh, then this is a, sub, a sequential infusion of a new drug or substance. So we're putting in a different med or fluid, and then they've got the concurrent infusion. Now, this other code, the 96368, same thing specify the drug or substance, okay, that's important, uh, for the concurrent infusions. But the guidelines tell you report 96368 only once per date of service. So that's where the confusion comes in. They knew it was concurrent, but you can only code it once in uh, a date of service. Then they are saying, by the way, you could use these in conjunction with these other codes. Now, 
the 6-8 code, look up here, right? That's in concert with these, these other add-on codes. So this is the explanation of how I, I made this smaller because find a code had this in additional, but um, uh, most of us already know, you know, you place an IV line in the arm, usually blah, 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 all that other good stuff. Um, but um, note that the physician provides periodic assessment and patient documentation of the response to the treatment and stuff that's entailed in that code. And then it was bulleted out. So you've got your 96365 for up to one hour, and then these are those add-on codes. But remember, each additional hour of the same infusion. So if it takes two hours to infuse something, and there's all kinds of protocols and reasons why it would take two hours, then you're going to use those two codes, right? And then if it's going to be a sequential infusion of a different drug let's say okay as soon as we put in this this drug we're going to turn around and you know give them potassium a bag with potassium or something and we're going to do that for up to an hour and then um you've got the 96368 which is the uh, a different substance or drug at the same time as another drug is concurrent infusion so the start and stop times can be counted just because they in the, the question she said well they started and stopped and then they started it up again and stopped okay you you can do that so it, there's reasons why they would stop what they're putting in so the stop don't confuse start and stop with stopping means I'm not giving we're not giving them anymore and I think that's where that one question was getting them confused because they can still turn off the med, monitor them, you know, stop the, the uh, fluid and whatever content it is from going in and then start again and stop again. Where you have a hard stop is where you take the IV out and then you have to put an IV back in, right? So don't don't get those two things confused of what you think a start and stop is and what the documentation of a start and stop is because we don't always use the same verbiage. Now I went ahead and um, footnoted where this comes from but correct coding for hydration administration this is exactly what you needed to be aware of by the way if you're just doing hydration there's two codes that you can use for that. It's 96360, and that's for 30 min 31 minutes to an hour, right? And then your add-on code is 96361. Okay, I just copied and pasted that from the site. Uh, so hydration is different. Infusing for hydration is different than infusing for other substances. And uh hydration has to state it's hydro for hydration so we're infusing what do we need to ask ourselves to make sure we can code this properly what's the reason for the encounter why is the patient getting the infusion is it for hydration is it because they're low on potassium is it because they need uh, another chemical uh, because they're having a heart arrhythmia there's a, you have to remember your heart is muscular, electrical, and chemical. So I have these horse pills that I take for potassium because I have to take HCTZ. If I don't take that potassium, it will, kind of feels like you're having a heart attack. Either that or you go to sleep and it's really hard to get up out of bed. It makes you very, you know, um, extremely weak and tired. And um, I put myself in the hospital once because I missed like three days and I took the HCTZ, but the potassium's two big giant horse pills. It's hard to remember to take them. And I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't wake up. So off to the ER I went, and sure enough, my potassium was so low that I got an infusion. And they made me take them, like six of those horse pills at once. So what's the reason for the encounter? If you don't have the, you have to have that documented. What's the name of the substance? What are we giving them? If we're giving them potassium or, you know, there's probably a J code, 
HixPix code that is appended. And that's going to also uh, give you the reason, back up why you're having it, and then the time. It's always documented by the nurses. So the examples that were given from this website were so good that I wanted to, to show you. If a patient's seen for low potassium level and receives a one hour bolus of intravenous fluid mixed with potassium for treatment for the low potassium. So why are, what, what's the medical necessity? Why are they there? Low potassium. What's the Medicaid, you know, what are we giving them? The infusion of potassium at all for what? Low potassium. Then your CPT code would be the 96365 for the infusion. And you have to know, is it prophylactic or diagnostic purposes? So since the potassium bolus is targeted at for the treatment of low potassium, the infusion is therapeutic. Uh, it's not for hydration. Now, could they be dehydrated? Yeah, and they could even be diagnosed as hydration as well and low potassium. But they're giving them the IV for potassium, not for the, the dehydration. The uh, next one is an ER case. Uh, the patient is uh, febrile and dehydrated with a suspicious chest x-ray with a possible pneumonia. They receive uh, an IV hydration infusion for uh, over six hours of lactated ringers, which that's a pretty common hydration thing, as well as an, uh, an infusion of um, uh, vanicos, van oh dear, I can usually say this really well but I leave the in out, bacosomyosin over one hour. Okay, so how are we gonna code this out? So what is the medical necessity? It's for hydration. So 96361 is what we're gonna code and the infusion of antibiotic is going to go uh, reported as the primary infusion uh, with one unit 96365. So six units of the hydration and then the um, uh, med the antibiotic 96365. That makes sense. So uh, again, not to really answer the the um, both parts of that question, we kind of need more information on this uh, ER and point of service and stuff like that. So uh, without knowing why was the patient getting the hydration, why were they set up for observation in the ER, was what was the reason for the start and stop? You know, we can't really answer that question properly, but that's the resources and the codes to go by to go forward. So hopefully you can do your own research off of that. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.